Hello, this is Albert van Dijk, and this is a video about soil moisture remote sensing. Again, another aspect of water remote sensing. Now, soil moisture is uh, is one of those things that uh, is really useful for a, a, a quite a large number of applications. So, I only list a few here, but some of the more important ones, I suppose. So, for water resources accounting, know how much water is where, uh, water availability accounting, and also for flood risk, uh, it's really useful to know what the current soil moisture is. So in the case of flood risk, basically the, the wetter the soil is, the more of the rainfall will be turned into uh, flood waters, if you like. Um, agricultural drought is, uh, is uh, a very important thing in Australia, uh, where drought declaration depends on the availability of, of soil moisture, or at least the decision is made partly on information uh, on the availability of soil moisture. Soil moisture remote sensing uh, can also help us with early drought warning. Uh, we might see a deficit developing weather forecasting. The soil moisture uh, is an important factor in the surface water and energy balance, how much of the sun's radiation gets turned into uh, uh, vapor, uh, and uh, how much of its energy gets turned into uh, uh, sensible heat, you know, hot, hot air. Uh, fire management, as a, in a previous video, we already talked about this, that, that, that the weather uh, this litter uh, in this picture here, for instance, will ignite, uh, uh, will primarily depend on how much moisture uh, is in it. In this case, it looks pretty wet. And um, finally, in terms of earth system science, you know, soil moisture is really what connects the, the land and the atmosphere and, and has a really important role in how the water and, uh, and uh, climate uh, systems interact. And of course, finally, the vegetation is part of that. So water affects vegetation and carbon uh, relations in the carbon cycle. So lots of different applications. Um, now, of course, we can just model soil moisture. Uh, and indeed, that is what the Bureau of Meteorology is currently doing. And if you've got good rainfall information, you actually can do a pretty good job uh, at, at, at that. And this is uh, from the Bureau of Meteorology's website, the Australian Landscape Water Balance from the Australian Water Resource Assessment Model uh, that, uh, that uh, I had a role in developing in the past. And uh, as you can see, you know, um, there seems to be some pretty detailed information available. Once you start looking in areas like this here, you start seeing these big gaps and, and strange brown sort of features that don't look entirely natural, and that's because they're not. Uh, basically, you'll find that there's only one gauge in the middle of this circular area here, uh, and, and similar in other areas. So uh, that basically is because we don't have any rain gauges in, the, in those areas. So if you want to know soil moisture in, in, in cases like that, uh, which might not be important for agriculture, but may be important for fire, for instance, or for weather forecasting or such, uh, then we're going to have to use uh, remote sensing. Now, we can use re remote sensing in two ways. We can say, well, because it's rainfall that determines soil moisture, uh, we can actually combine our gauge rainfall with satellite observed rainfall. Um, and the Bureau of uh, Meteorology in the previous picture doesn't do that yet, uh, but, uh, but uh, we here we're using the same model and show that you can actually do that. You can fill the gaps in the uh, in the in the desert areas and start estimating soil moisture with, with satellite rainfall and as you can see you lose those sort of big round sort of um, artifacts um, so that's already an improvement but we can also use uh, remote sensing of soil moisture directly so in a previous video we talked about radar uh, and how you can use that to uh, measure soil moisture as well as uh, measuring uh, whether the soil is frozen or not as you can see here in light green uh, and you can do the same with the passive microwave. Uh, you can uh, get also uh, quite good measurements of, of uh, surface soil moisture content. Uh, they are quite shallow measurements, I mean, that's, that's something to uh, keep in mind. We're really only looking at the skin of the, of, uh, of the onion, if you like, of the Earth's surface. Uh, and that's what these pictures sort of uh, help you sort of get a sense of. So what, you know, when you think of what is it that the satellite is measuring, you have to you know, take into account that you know, there might be things like duff or litter layers, uh, that, uh, that are on top of the soil. And when you realize that the um, uh, depth of measurement of, uh, of these radar and passive microwave techniques is similar to the wavelength, uh, uh, then you can uh, calculate from that that that's going to be in the order of centimeters. Uh, uh, and so for you know, if L bend, maybe uh, uh, 10 or 20 centimeters even, but for shorter uh, uh, microwave frequencies, it will maybe only be one or two centimeters. So, you know, we put a ruler along the soil profile here, we can see that really. Uh, there's a, there's a, you know, we're only really measuring the very top of the soil where, where there's a lot of organic matter typically in litter, uh, mosses, uh, also cracks sometimes when the soil dries out, roots in this case, we're measuring roots probably if, we, if uh, 
if the whole world looked like this, we'd be measuring root water content rather than soil water content. Uh, and it can also be like things like gravel, or desert pavements in this in this case. Uh, so we get quite a you know uh, specific measurement for the water content in this case in the top gravel layer rather than what might be below it. You know there might be something else uh, below it. The same here with this uh, this uh, pavement here. So that's something to keep in mind when using remotely sensed soil moisture. That really you're looking at the very top of the Earth's surface. Nonetheless, it's very useful information and. Um, uh, one of the uh, uses is for long-term climate records so that we can see how the interaction between the water and the climate cycle is changing over time. And when we're trying to do that, we get the same challenge as we saw in another video for altimetry that we have to combine data for a number of subsequent missions. And that's what this image here uh, shows you. What, what uh, this project has uh, 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 aimed to do and did uh, was to combine uh, measurements from a number of passive microwave sensors uh, launched at different times and some of them uh, are still continuing, uh, some of them have uh, stopped in the meantime, uh, such as the um, uh, the trim satellite that suggests, the picture suggests it's still going, but it has actually stopped. The same with the Emsery uh, instrument on the uh, Aqua satellite that also carries MODIS. These instruments have given up, so their record has ended, but others are still continuing. Uh, and, uh, and similarly with radar, so there's a bunch of uh, radar satellites, some of which have stopped, like these two, but we've got others in the meantime. So the real challenge is, how do we put all that information together? Well, uh, that is quite a, a, a complex topic, uh, and uh, one uh, that's uh, good fun to do research on, uh, at least I think so. Um, but basically what you're trying to do is get, get the, uh, the characteristics of the temporal pattern in the same order of magnitude, uh, and, uh, and that involves often uh, if you like calibrating or correcting one time series against another that you then use as a reference. And if you've done that, uh, then you can uh, start looking at long-term time series and that's what this uh, uh, video uh, aims to do. <clears throat> and basically uh, it's for, uh, for, for more to visualize uh, what, you, what you can get out of these sorts of data. So this is from that same project that I just mentioned uh, and uh, it visualizes the uh, long-term record that they've created. You see, for example, the swaths being collected here. Uh, I'm guessing probably by one of the passive microwave satellites. Uh, and uh, you know, going to a sort of a more uh, uh, projected view, uh, we can see time series being animated here of soil moisture uh, and frozen soil there in white. Uh, and uh, in green, the areas where we cannot see soil moisture because there's just too much vegetation. Uh, we can look at in anomalies is kind of useful because then you can see if it's more or less than, than you'd expect than average. So red areas are uh, comparatively dry compared to the average and blue are comparatively wet uh, areas. And yeah, we can look at some of the big events. Uh, we, can, we can zoom in on areas, make, it, make some nice 3D visualization here as well, where you see uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the blue sort of coming up as peaks of uh, of, uh, of water, if you like. And um, anyway, while, while this animation plays, I guess uh, this explains some of the uses of soil moisture remote sensing, some of the ways that you can use satellite data to estimate soil moisture, and, uh, and uh, some of the challenges that you have uh, uh, in, uh, in putting the data from different successive soil moisture uh, missions together. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and I'll let it play its uh, natural course and uh, hope uh, to see you in another video.